Hi, my name is Andy Paradowski. I'm the warranty manager for the Hayes Bicycle Group. Today we're going to be doing bleed and hose replacement for our hydraulic disc brakes. The bleed kit will come in a bag looking like this, including a bottle, some fittings, and some clear hose. We attach a short length of hose to the squeeze bottle, provide our own catch container, and hook up the remainder of the hose to the catch bottle. The next step is to fill up our squeeze bottle with DOT3 or DOT4 fluid. We package DOT4 fluid in a handy bottle which is just about the right size for bleeding a set of disc brakes. When you're bleeding any of the brakes in the Hayes disc brake family, you use the same method. When we bleed the stroker brake, we position the bike so it's at the stand with the front down at about a 45 degree angle and turn the bars so that the brake that we're bleeding is pointing down. Next, we'll remove the caliper from the frame. On a rear caliper, we use international standard mount brackets, so we only need to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper to the bracket. For this, we're going to use a five millimeter Allen wrench, and we'll take our bolts and mount washers and set them aside where we know where to find them when we're done with the bleed. And now we remove the pads. On most of our brakes, the pads are held in by spring clips, so we can grasp the tab on the pad and pull it outward into the center to remove the pad. Next thing we want to do to prepare ourselves to bleed is loosen the clamp screws on top of the master cylinder. And we want to loosen the clamp just enough so we can rotate the master cylinder on the bar. We want to remove the bleed screw from the master cylinder. The stroker has two bleed screws, one on each side of the master cylinder because it's a universal master cylinder. The bleed screw on the stroker uses a Torx 10 fitting. To remove the bleed screw, we insert the Torx wrench and turn counterclockwise to remove the screw. Next, we take our catch container and hang it on the handlebars of the bike. Here we've made a catch container from a bottle. Put some zip ties around the neck so it hangs nicely on the bike. This is the stroker bleed fitting. We can thread the stroker bleed fitting right into the hole from which we remove the bleed plug and attach the hose. The next thing we want to do is make sure the pistons are pushed all the way back into the caliper. We're going to take the pistons and push them all the way back into the caliper using the box end of a 10 millimeter wrench. We take the box end, put it on the piston, and we use the box end so we can go around the piston post and push the piston all the way back into its bore. We're going to flip the caliper over and do the other side. Now that the caliper pistons are all the way back in the bore, we can begin the bleed. Our next step is to remove the bleeder cap from the caliper and put it aside where we won't lose it. Now we take a 6 millimeter wrench. If you have a 6 millimeter box end wrench, it will generally fit right over the caliper bleeder and you can hang it on thusly. The next thing we're going to do is hook up our bleed bottle to the caliper bleeder. Take the clear hose and put it over the caliper bleeder until it fits on snugly. To give us an extra insurance policy, we can take a silver mag compression bushing. This is the hose compression bushing that we use on our mag brake. Use it to lock the hose in place. Now I've got a very tight seal here and this won't come off while I'm doing a bleed. To begin the bleed, I'm going to open up the caliper bleeder. About a quarter turn. If I have any air in my bleeder hose, and squeeze it up into my bleed bottle. It'll prevent me from pushing any air through the brake system. So now what I want to do is make sure I clear the caliper of any air. So what I'm going to do is squeeze for about a five count and release for about a three count. Now while I'm squeezing and releasing, I can rotate the caliper a little bit. And I generally want to have the caliper sitting at about a 45 degree angle. I squeeze and release until I'm sure that I'm not going to get any more air out of the caliper when I release the bottle. When I'm satisfied with that, I can now complete the bleeding process. If during the bleeding process you start squeezing and your bottle starts to collapse, the trick you can do is grasp onto the head of the bottle, slightly loosen the bottle, let some air in to inflate it. Now we can go back to turbo bleed and get a very firm feel on the bottle. The next step is to take a look and see what we get coming out of the master cylinder. We should have squeeze until we have a good, clear, solid stream of fluid coming out of the master cylinder. Once we have a good stream of fluid coming out of the master cylinder, we can flick the lever, bring it down to the bar, and let it snap back. We can do that a couple times, and we may rattle some additional air bubbles out. Also, it's helpful to rotate the master cylinder on the bar all the way up and back down to normal riding position, and we sometimes get some additional air coming out. 
We can flip the lever a few more times. And when we have a good clear stream of fluid coming out of the master cylinder, we can close the master cylinder bleeder. At this point, we can remove the hose from the caliper bleeder. We can set aside our six millimeter wrench. We can go back to the 10 millimeter wrench, just ensure that the pistons have not creeped out during a bleed. If we spill, or we just want to clean up our disc brakes, we can use a little isopropyl alcohol on a clean rag and clean the brake. We can now remove the bleed fitting from the master cylinder. The easy way to do this is to remove the hose from the stroker bleed fitting, hold it up and let it drain into your catch container. Now simply remove the fitting and replace it with our T10 bleed plug. Again, if we've got a few drops of fluid on the master cylinder, no problem. Use a rag with a little isopropyl alcohol, clean off the master cylinder. Now we're ready to reattach our master cylinder to the handlebar here with our two four millimeter bolts. The next step is to uh, reattach the caliper and set it up, make sure our brake is good to go. What we can do is first test our brake by either putting it on the caliper or using a shim. This tool is called the Hayes Feeler Gauge. It is a shim that mimics the width of a rotor. It also has a feeler gauge or caliper setup. Whenever we use this in connection with the caliper, we want to make sure that this is clean of any DOT4 brake fluid. So we can use the feeler gauge to test our bleed by sliding it between the pads and squeezing the brake lever. It feels good. We can also use this for setting up the caliper. Slide our caliper back over the rotor and now we can reinstall our, our two mount bolts. Make sure we put our mount washers in place. And we'll tighten down our mount bolts, but just so the caliper can slide back and forth on the disc. We can now use the feeler gauge and slide the feeler gauge between the disc and the pads. Now we can squeeze the lever and hold while we tighten up our caliper mount bolts, release the lever and pull our feeler gauge out. Thanks for watching. This is Andy Paradowski from the Hayes Bicycle Group saying, keep the rubber side down.